the beginning of our story, let's rehearse it one more time. One day, out in the country, the gingerbread man scampered down a path. It's very important that when you're doing this, you keep rehearsing the story over and over with the kids using hand motions. One quick note, you don't need to draw the pictures in front of the kids. You could just put uh, cut out pictures that you get from the internet, clip art, or you could draw the pictures lightly with a pencil and then just trace over it so that you have it already drawn out ahead of time. Whichever way you feel more comfortable with, it's really not supposed to be an art project, it's just a, supposed to be fast sketch. We just said the beginning of our story, we repeated it, we had our hand motions, which again, just use any hand motions, there really isn't one way to do it, it's just as long as the kids are physically engaged. After we say the beginning of the story, if your children have grasp of the beginning of the story and orally they can rehearse the story with mastery, you may want to go back and add some fancy words. I get a salt and pepper shaker, I fill it with beads, then I say to the kids, boys and girls, this beginning of our story sounds pretty good, but when we put salt and pepper on food, does it make it taste bland or spicy? Spicy. Let's add a little spice to our writing. Add spicy fancy words. So I have the kids put their hands up and shake, and I do that in front of my movie script. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to add those spicy fancy words. Well, what am I going to add those sp spicy fancy words to? What I suggest is that you go over and you put an X on the most important things. So I'll say to them, boys and girls, I'm going to put an X on things that we think are important. The sun and the country, that's kind of neat, but who's mostly important in this story? The gingerbread man. So let's put an X on him. I think we may need to describe him. And then he's running down a path. Eh, well, I don't need to describe the path. I don't think the path is that important in the story. So maybe we just need to describe the gingerbread man. He's important for us to see or to know his personality or to know how he feels. In this story, he's running. Now, is it more important to know what he looks like, his size, shape, color, or his personality that he's naughty? I think it's important that he's naughty. I think I may write naughty here because he is a naughty gingerbread man. We know that. Let's add that into our story. Ready? One day out in the country, the naughty gingerbread man scampered down a path. Now we have the beginning of our story, so let's go to the middle. We put our hands up and we say, beginning, done. Uh, let's go to the middle. Ready? What happened next? While the gingerbread man was scampering down the path. Notice that I'm saying, all of the actions that were occurring. Notice I'm saying the actions that were occurring in the beginning box to help sequence to the middle. So now we're gonna say that one more time. Ready? What happened next while the gingerbread man was scampering down the path? All right, let me tell you what happened next. First of all, everyone point and go up ahead. Oh, so up ahead. And now, here's the gingerbread man up ahead, he spotted a big rock. Hey, do you want to use rock or boulder? Which one? Boulder? Okay, let's do that. Up ahead, he spotted a boulder. And what do you think that naughty gingerbread man did? Do you think he walked around or do you think he soared over it? What do you think he did? Turn to your buddy and tell them. So then they tell. Come back to me. Yes, you're absolutely right. He soared over the boulder. That silly little gingerbread man. Now let's go back and let's say our whole story. Ready? One day out in the country, the naughty gingerbread man scampered down a path. Up ahead, he spotted a boulder and soared over it. Now let's go to the end of our story. Ready? What happened next after he soared over the boulder? All right, everybody. Let's go to our ending box. Now, in our ending box, this is what you're gonna see. Here's the boulder, here's the gingerbread man. We have our beginning, our middle, 
and now we have the ending where the gingerbread man is going to land on his head. Let's start this off with a sound effect. Everyone clap your hands and say splat. Ready? Splat. Who are we talking about? The gingerbread man. Uh-oh. Woo, woo, woo. Redundant police, redundant police. I don't want to keep saying gingerbread man, gingerbread man. So my gingerbread man is a boy. Why don't I use the word he instead? Ready? Splat. He was startled when he landed on his head. Now we're going to go back and we're going to say the whole thing. Are you ready? One day out in the country, the naughty gingerbread man scampered down a path. Up ahead, he spotted a big boulder and soared over it. Splat! He was startled when he landed on his head. There's our entire story for the movie script. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how you would plan a story and what all the different parts are in here. Let's get started. Turn back to page 17. We have our completed movie script on page 17 and what I've done is I've inserted on the opposing page just a blank piece of paper for you to take notes on how to build a movie script because you're going to do this before you present the movie to the students. It's going to be done ahead of time. I'm going to show you all the different tricks that I use in order to make a movie. On the plain piece of paper, I'm going to draw the movie script. This was our beginning, middle, and end. Now for the beginning of the movie, what I have is I have a secret formula that you're going to follow in order to write that one sentence beginning. And that secret formula is SC arrow. Now you're not telling the children the secret formula, you're using it so that you write a precise and concise sentence that's going to have everything you need for the beginning of a story, a story opening. The S is for setting. And setting is going to tell us when, like we look at our watch, and where, or time and place. For the setting, when we look at time or when, you want to choose either weather, and you don't want it always to be a sunny day because then when your kids write their own stories, all they'll say is one sunny day. So you could have one day, one summer, um, a cloud, on a cloudy day, on a snowy day, windy day, on a foggy day. You could have all this different type of weather that you could choose for the when. For the place, the where, this is the big setting, like you're opening up a story, like long, long ago in a faraway kingdom. You're giving the big setting to your reader. So it could be things like down at the park, the baseball field or the field, football field, soccer field, down at the school, the beach, the desert. You could go on and on for all those different tar parts of the setting. The C is for character. Character can be a person or an animal. So again, when I choose a person or an animal, I need to have the kids think of a way to come up with a person or an animal so they're not always choosing the same ones. When you're choosing a person or an animal, I'll show you a way for you to choose different people or different animals so that you're not always selecting the same characters over and over again. The person, when we choose them, people either live, work, or play. So when I look at live, I always think of where they live. So we could write about our mom, our dad, our brothers, our sisters, people in our neighborhood. Work is different jobs, a doctor, a truck driver, a teacher, or play, all the things people love to do, a painter, a musician, a surfer, a football player, a ballerina. So these are different things for people. For animals, I like to jump into the habitat that an animal lives. So I'm going to jump into the ocean. What animals do I see there? An octopus, a shark, a fish, or I'll go to the desert. I'll see a coyote, I'll see a snake, or I'll go to the mountains, a bear, a bird. So if you can see, what I'm doing is I'm going to different categories in my brain so that I can think of more characters. So we have now our setting 
and our character. And then, of course, the arrow is going to be for action. If you remember back in our story, we had our sun for one day. We had our mountains for out in the country. Then we had our gingerbread man, who was our character. He scampered down the road. So now we have our setting, when and where, character, and then the action. What is the character doing? Remember to put it in past tense because stories are written in past tense. That will create a sentence. And you'll draw a picture for each one of those parts. So in our previous story, one day, we made mountains for out in the country. Then we had our little gingerbread man. And what did he do? He scampered down the road. And as you write each part, you're introducing those phrases to the kids so then they can say all of those phrases together to make a story opening, which is your secret formula, SC Arrow. Now let's go to the middle of the story. In the middle of the story, our secret formula is going to be TC Arrow. T is for transition. Now transitions in a story can be when transitions, where, and sound effects. And there's other types of transitions as well. But these are the ones that I usually do most often. Because many times when you're going to a new scene, maybe some time has changed or a new location um, has brought you to that new scene. And sometimes it's fun to add a sound effect. But don't go overboard because then kids want to use them all throughout their writing and that doesn't sound too great. Our when transitions and our where transitions. So these could be things like next, later on, after a while, off in the distance, out of nowhere. The sound effects is known as onomatopoeia and that is something like plop, splat, buzz. Those are different sounds that can start the sentence. The end of the story is T, C arrow as just like the middle. Transition, character, action. And again, you're going to draw the picture. So notice, remember, in the middle of our story, what did we have for our transition? We had up ahead. And later in the week, we changed it to suddenly, because remember what I told you, you don't have to keep the language exact. You can change it around, and that's actually a better language development activity when you change around the different phrases and you're not trying to memorize. So we had suddenly the gingerbread man, so there's our character, and then action, what did he do? He soared over a big boulder he saw on the path. Then we go to our ending. What was our transition? That was a sound effect. That was splat, and then who did the action? The gingerbread man. We don't want to keep saying the gingerbread man, so what could we use? He, and then what was his action? Splat! He was startled when he landed on his head. So now we have our secret formulas and we have all the different ways that you can use these secret formulas to write your movie scripts. I hope some of these tricks help you write movie scripts that are engaging and fun for your students. Remember when you're planning this story, you're using the vocabulary with a different character and setting than the focus story. Why? Because you want your children to have the ability to use these vocabulary words, not just in reference to the focus story. If they think that vocabulary word is only a word they can use with that story because that's the only place they've used it, then their brain won't become flexible and won't be able to master the word. So the more that you use the vocabulary words in a different context and they're using it with flowing language, that's why we have the movie script, then what happens is, is they begin to master that word and they begin to learn to use it in different places. So then they own the word. That's why we make sure the movie script has nothing to do other than the vocabulary with the focus story. If you turn to the next page, I'm going to show you how to schedule this in a week.